Okay, let's go take a look at chapter four, Kapitel 4, uh, die Verben, uh, the, the action verbs, die Verben. And this um, takes you into how to express actions, things that people do, and how to ask questions, and of course, how to say no in German, other than just simply saying nine. <clears throat> so let's look at part one here, that's on page 47 in the textbook. It's watchats, watchats, watchats means vocabulary. Um, if you want to translate it literally, what, what means word and shots means treasure or collection. So watchats means a word collection or vocabulary. Let's start right away with the first one, gehen. And notice that the verbs are all in their infinitive, that means in their normal uh, unconjugated form. So this does not pertain to a particular person or a particular party doing any kind of an action. It's just in general describing the action. Of course, they're not nouns, so there is no article. So again, it's gehen, gehen, to go, lernen, lernen, to learn, schreiben, schreiben, it's to write, schwimmen, schwimmen, to swim, Singen, singen, to sing. Üben, üben, means to practice. Let's try again. Gehen, lernen, schreiben, schwimmen, singen, üben. In part two, on page 48, We'll take a look at the people that are involved in doing actions. So, of course, that is ich. That means I, ich. Wir, we, wir. Notice pronunciation of the W is like a V, wir. Du means you. Ihr means you as uh, in the plural sense. Sie. That's a, the formal version of you, which you use to go talk to a person of authority of, or when you address somebody who is, has a higher social standing or he's um, sort of higher up from you. So teacher, policeman, government official, um, um, you know, friends, parents, uh, somebody in a store, uh, in a business, your boss. Normally you would uh, address them with C instead of do. And then only after that person tells you, hey, you can say do to me, I mean, duzen, duzen means that, yeah, you're allowed to go and use the informal version. And then C, of course, is also used to refer to you um, in, again, the plural sense. So again, it's ich, wir, du, ihr, sie. And if referring to someone, him or her, then it would be er, that's he or him. See, also used, of course, in the they, see. And is, if you're referring to something that is of a neuter gender. So er is he, that's masculine. See is she, that's feminine. Is is it, it's uh, neuter. So, er, sie, is, und sie, they. And we call these types of words, of course, subject pronouns, because they stand in for someone. And if you're building an action sentence, of course, subject pronouns refer to the person that is doing something to someone or something. So, you need a subject, a verb, and an object. And again, remember the difference between do and see and ear. So do means you as a single person in the informal sense. You step for a friend, a close relative, um, a child, but not someone in a you know position of authority or somebody who you don't know very well. And that because you use see. Also notice it's spelled with an uppercase S because it refers to a single person or a single party in a formal context. And then ear, again lowercase, refers to 
um, a group of other people. So it's you in the plural sense versus you in the singular informal sense. So if you look at the Übungen on page 50, the Übungen, you can try to figure out what kind of a pronoun would make the most sense. Is it du, is it sie, or is it ihr? So der Lehrer. So go think about it. how would you address the letter? Do you say do to the letter or C or ear? Well, do would be used if it's informal. It's not a relative of yours. It's not a child. It's not a, a buddy. So it, it's a question of C or ear. It's a single person. So it, of course, would be C. Ain't baby. Most likely would say do to the baby. And so you can figure out the other ones too. And it's not always kind of clear. Um, and certainly there's also, you know, context and, and culture. I mean, clearly you would not talk to your grandparents using C, although in the older days it was not uncommon. In fact, in the older days it was not uncommon for children to address their father using the formal C. But clearly that hasn't happened and as long as at least I can remember. Not 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 since the uh, 1940s. So let's go take a look on page 51 at the story in section 4. So I'm going to read the story for you so you can follow along. Page 51, section 4. Here's a story, a Geschichte. Using verbs, you have just learned the Geschichte dass die Verben, die wir jetzt gelernt haben, benutzt. Frau Schmidt ist Lehrerin. Ihr Fach ist Deutsch. Die Schüler lernen Deutsch, Englisch, Mathe und andere Fächer. Frau Schmidt schreibt mit Kreide an die Tafel. Die Schüler schreiben in die Hefte. Sie lernen gut. Frau Schmidt fragt, Jürgen, was machst du nach der Schule? Jürgen sagt, ich schwimme. Und du, Helmut? Ich singe im Chor. Uschi und Marianne, ihr spielt Tennis, nicht wahr? Nein, wir spielen nicht Tennis. Wir telefonieren mit Gabi. Ja, Gabi geht nach Hause und übt Klavier. Sie ist sehr fleißig. Was macht Frau Schmidt nach der Schule? Sie korrigiert die Aufgaben und schreibt die Pläne für den nächsten Schultag. Start again. You're going to be a little bit faster this time. Frau Schmidt ist Lehrerin. Ihr Fach ist Deutsch. Die Schüler lernen Deutsch, Englisch, Mathe und andere Fächer. Frau Schmidt schreibt mit Kreide an die Tafel. Die Schüler schreiben in die Hefte. Sie lernen gut. Frau Schmidt fragt, Jürgen, was machst du nach der Schule? Ich schwimme. Und du, Helmut? Ich singe im Chor. Uschi und Marianne, ihr spielt Tennis, nicht wahr? Nein, wir spielen nicht Tennis. Wir telefonieren mit Gabi. Ja, Gabi geht nach Hause und übt Klavier. Sie ist sehr fleißig. Was macht Frau Schmidt nach der Schule? Sie korrigiert die Aufgaben und schreibt die Pläne für den nächsten Schultag. Let's try one more time and this time just state or try to pronounce the sentence yourself after you hear it. Again, start at the beginning. Frau Schmidt ist Lehrerin. Ihr Fach ist Deutsch. Die Schüler lernen Deutsch, Englisch, Mathe und andere Fächer. Frau Schmidt schreibt mit Kreide an die Tafel. Die Schüler schreiben in die Hefte. 
Sie lernen gut. Frau Schmidt fragt. Jürgen, was machst du nach der Schule? Ich schwimme. Und du, Helmut? Ich singe im Chor. Uschi und Marianne, ihr spielt Tennis, nicht wahr? Nein, wir spielen nicht Tennis. Wir telefonieren mit Gabi. Ja, Gabi geht nach Hause und übt Klavier. Sie ist sehr fleißig. Was macht Frau Schmidt nach der Schule? Sie korrigiert die Aufgaben und schreibt die Pläne für den nächsten Schultag. So a couple of words about the explanation for this. So the words uh, of what they mean or, or next to it, but there's a couple of things that are interesting to, um, to, to think about. Um, one of them you may notice is there's, when Frau Schmidt fragt or asks, Jürgen, was machst du nach der Schule? Uh, machen is, of course, to make something. It's if you build something, you, you machen. But it's also used in other contexts, like what we might use in English, to do. What are you going to do? What do you do? Then in German it says, was machst du? Um, so it's a little bit different. Often you actually can tell um, somebody who's from Germany because they often use the English word make when they really mean to use the English word do. The other one that's interesting here is where it says below, Uschi und Marianne, ihr spielt Tennis, nicht wahr? The nicht wahr in this case actually means nicht, means no or not. Wahr means true um, or is true. So nicht wahr means um, no, no, not true. Um, so that's often used similar to where you might use in English, don't you? Like Ushi and Mariani, uh, you're playing tennis, don't you? Or aren't you? Um, so in German, it's very common to use the word nicht wahr. Some of some other people might say uh, use the word order, uh, or order, or they might say Usha Mariani, you spiel tennis, order. Uh, the other thing you hear some regional differences. For example, in uh, southern parts of Bavaria and Schwabia, you might hear the word Neda. Uh, they might say uh, some like Usha Mariani, you spiel tennis, net or Neda. Um, it's a sort of a short regional version of nicht wahr, but you might often find that. Find that. The other thing you might often find is an abbreviation of that. Instead of saying nicht wahr, you might hear nicht wahr. They leave out the T at the end, make a little bit of a shorter one. All right, so those are some of the, the key things here. And then, of course, there are the uh, Übungen and the various parts of it. Now, let's go take a closer look at the conjugation. And the conjugation simply means that you modify the verb depending on the person. So, for example, if you look on page 56, page 56, um, and you use common words, uh, common verbs like fragen, kaufen, kommen, tanzen, trinken, antworten, arbeiten, besuchen, you modify them depending on who's saying it. For example, if you used the word tanzen, it would be ich. Tanze. I'm dancing. Du tanzt. Er tanzt. Sie tanzt. Es tanzt. Wir tanzen. Ihr tanzt. And sie tanzen. So you modify the ending of the verb depending on the pronoun. Now it depends a little bit on whether the um, verb ends in uh, a, a ZT or in um, um, a T, so it depends a little bit on sort of what it, how it's it's done. But like, ich tanze, ich arbeite, du tanzt, du arbeitest. Now, of course, you might wonder, well, how come it's not say tanzest? Well, it used to be, 
but it changed over the years to simply du tanzt, du arbeitest, you're working. Then ESCS arbeitet, wir arbeiten, ihr arbeitet, sie arbeiten. And then, of course, in the formal word, use the same conjugation as for the plural C. Now, again, you're going to get used to it. And a lot of times there are some rules that you can follow for how to conjugate a verb. But the simplest thing is to simply learn it. Again, every time you learn a verb, learn how to conjugate it. Again, let's look at some of the verbs here that uh, we've just seen. So starting on page 55, we have in section 6 some really good verbs. We have antworten, antworten, that means to answer. Arbeiten, arbeiten, means to work. Besuchen, besuchen, means to visit. Fragen, Fragen means to ask. Kaufen, kaufen means to buy. Kommen, kommen means to come. Tanzen, tanzen means to dance. And trinken, trinken means to drink. Now, if you look at negation, basically deny something or not do something, all you use is the word nicht. So, for example, if you look on page 60 in section 7, it gives some examples on how to deny something or not do something. Like you might say, ich komme, I'm coming, ich komme. Well, if you're not coming, it would mean, ich komme nicht. Herbert tanzt, Herbert tanzt, Herbert, Herbert's dancing. Well, if he's not dancing, it would be, Herbert tanzt nicht. Use the word nicht at the end. Or wir antworten. Well, wir antworten nicht. So in English, the closest you get is use the word doesn't. Like, ich tanze nicht, I don't dance. Or I'm not dancing. Er schwimmt nicht. He doesn't swim. Or he's not swimming. Wir arbeiten nicht. We are not working. Now, on page 62 in section 8, you have a variation of that if you are using an adverb to describe a verb. For example, Johanna spielt gut. Johanna's playing well. So the well, or the good in this case, modifies the spielen. How does she play? She plays well. Wie spielt sie? Sie spielt gut. Johanna spielt gut. If you want to deny that, you use the nicht between the verb and the adverb. So, Johanna spielt nicht gut. Herr Müller ist mein Lehrer. Herr Müller ist nicht mein Lehrer. Mutter ist zu Hause. Mutter ist nicht zu Hause. And you get some exercises. Die Eltern gehen in den Park. Die Eltern gehen nicht in den Park. Ursula singt im Chor. Ursula singt nicht im Chor. Frau Schmidt korrigiert die Aufgaben. Frau Schmidt korrigiert nicht die Aufgaben. Wir kaufen das Wörterbuch. Wir kaufen das Wörterbuch nicht. That's a little bit of an odd one here. Um, but uh, wir kaufen nicht das Wörterbuch is probably the closest one you're going to get to keep keep that all. That sounds a little bit odd. Uh, du antwortest sehr gut. Du antwortest nicht sehr gut. Ihr übt viel Klavier. Ihr übt nicht viel Klavier. Section 9 on page 63 gives you some uh, hints and some constructs on how to make a question. It's actually not that hard. For example, if you have ich tanze, 
just reverse the verb and the pronoun. Tanze ich? Du kommst. Kommst du? Wir arbeiten. Arbeiten wir? Er geht. Geht er? So to build a question of whether somebody's doing something, you just reverse the noun and the pronoun. Sorry, the verb and the pronoun. So in the Übungen on page 64, you get a couple examples of that and you get a way to practice. Der Arzt kommt, the doctor, der Arzt kommt. Kommt der Arzt? Die Gitarre ist alt. Ist die Gitarre alt? By the way, notice that we put the um, adverb at the end of the sentence. Er plant eine Party. Plant er eine Party? Sie arbeiten zu Hause. Arbeiten Sie zu Hause? Die Jungen lernen Deutsch. Lernen die Jungen Deutsch? Liebst du Deutsch? Ah, oh, sorry. Du liebst Deutsch? Liebst du Deutsch? Wir spielen Tennis. Spielen wir Tennis? A uh, little cultural thing that might be interesting to you, the word Arzt. So in German, it's unusual that you use the word doctor when you see a doctor. You're not going to say, I'm going to go to the doctor. It's more likely to say, um, you wouldn't say, ich gehe heute zum Doktor. You can say that, but it's not a, it's as, as normal. It's more likely to say, ich gehe heute zum Arzt. Ich gehe heute zum Arzt. I'm going today to the doctor. Arzt is more like physician you might have in this country. And the reason is that in Germany, being a physician is actually a profession. Um, it is a learned profession. It is, you don't get a doctorate. Um, so when you go to medical school in Germany and you graduate medical school and take your state exam for licensing, you become an Arzt but you actually do not have a doctorate. You're not a medical doctor. So you don't get an MD and you do not get the doctor title. If you stay at the university for another one to two years and you conduct research and you write a dissertation, a very short one, but you do some original research, some very small original research, then you get a doctor med, a doctor of medicine. And in that case, you would be called doctor. So often when you go to see in Germany, you see signs, you might find something like Dr. Med, M-E-D, John Smith. That means that that person is not only a physician, but one that wrote a dissertation. Whereas you might, for example, I have a friend there, he's a dentist. Um, he went to dental school, but he did not complete a, dis a dissertation. So he's simply a Zahnarzt, a dental uh, physician, Zahnarzt. But he would not be Dr. Herpich. He's simply Mr. Herpich because he is a Zahnarzt, fully licensed, no different than anybody with a doctorate. He just chose not to do any research before he went into practice. Whereas the dentist I used to see as a kid was a couple, and they both obviously went to dental school, completed a state exam to be licensed dentists, but stayed on at the university for a little bit longer to complete research and they were both doctor med dent doctor of medicine in dentistry so that's just a little bit of a, a difference between the two um, so you can understand the difference between an arzt and a doctor all right well i think that's enough for now for this particular chapter um, let's finish up this chapter with the gespräch on page 66 and you can again follow along so the Gespräch on page 66. Tag Heidi. Wie geht's? Danke, gut, Bernd. Und dir? Naja, es geht. Arbeitest du viel in der Deutschklasse? Ich übe Deutsch jeden Tag. Ich übe auch viel. Hast du Deutsch gern? Sehr gern. Kommst du mit? Nein, ich besuche jetzt meine Tante im Krankenhaus. Das tut mir leid. Bernd. Also, auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss, Heidi. So, a couple of things to notice about the Gespräch. Tag is a shorthand form of a guten Tag. You might also say a Tag. Uh, it's kind of like in Bavaria, like Servus. Again, let's go through it. Tag, Heidi. 
Wie geht's? Danke, gut, Bernd. Und dir? Naja, es geht. Arbeitest du viel in der Deutschklasse? Ich übe Deutsch jeden Tag. Ich übe auch viel. Hast du gern? Hast du Deutsch gern? Sehr gern. Kommst du mit? Nein, ich besuche jetzt meine Tante im Krankenhaus. Das tut mir leid, Bernd. Also, auf Wiedersehen. Tschüss, Heidi. All right, well, that's it for now for uh, this chapter. Good luck.